Good morning. Shall we please stand for our call to worship? Let us stand for our call to worship. Our call to worship, Psalm 34. I'll read verses 1, 3, and 8. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. This is your call to worship. Amen. Good morning, Fourth Street. I just want to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's, so, it's just a good feeling. I know it ain't all about feeling, but it is a good feeling to be around brothers and sisters in Christ, all in Christ, encouraging and empowering one another to live for Christ. If you got a previous program from a previous service you would with our family, you can look at that program and see Article Faith number seven. If you're viewing your, uh, on a service from a smart device, it'll be on the lower end of the television or the smart device you're viewing from. And we'll read Article Faith number seven in unison on the count of three, regeneration. One, two, three. We believe that the scripture teach that in order to be saved, the sinner must be regenerated or born again. That regeneration consists in giving a holy disposition to the mind that is in effect in a manner above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth so as to secure a voluntary obedience to the gospel and its proper evidence appear in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Amen. It is now time for our church covenant. And it reads, having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyful, enter this covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our deportment, <clears throat> to avoid all talent, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks of the beverage, and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be the power and glory forever. Amen.
at the cross where my Savior died. Now for the cleansing from sin, I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Hallelujah, glory to His name, precious name. Glory to His name, precious name. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. Father, we come before your presence this morning, thanking you, O oh Heavenly Father, for reminding us of the cross, at the cross where our Savior died, at the cross where he took our place. But, O oh Heavenly Father, we are glad that the story did not stop there. We thank you for him being buried, but on the third day, risen from the dead with all power in his hand. And we thank you for the story not stopping there, but he ascended back on to be seated at your right hand. And you have given him all authority over heaven and in earth. So we come this morning to thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for another privilege and opportunity to gather here at your house of worship, the remnant who are here, and for those who have gathered in their homes and in the various places to worship you, to give you glory, honor, and praise. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for waking us up this morning with a portion of health and strength, with clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, roof over our heads, and food on our table. And for those who Heavenly Father that may find themselves without, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for preparing a mansion for us, yes. not made by hand, yes. but eternally in the heaven. So as we come together this morning, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that your Holy Spirit will reel in our wandering mind of all that which is going on around us and help us to focus on the purpose for which we have gathered, and that is to praise your holy and righteous name. We pray now for our pastor as he prepared to bring forth your word, that you will pour into him what you would have him to pour out to us, that sinners will be saved and saints be strengthened, that we may carry out your kingdom assignment here on earth as you have commissioned us to be. And, O oh, Heavenly Father, as after it's all said and done, we'll be ever so careful to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And we pray and ask it all in the name of the one who died or rose and still lives has all power in his hand. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart and mind say amen, 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 amen. and amen again. Let us now prepare our hearts for the announcements. Good morning, 4th Street family. These are your announcements for the week of Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. Today is our annual Pew Rally. When you submit your tithe and offering via Givelify, mail, or via Dropbox at the Finance Office, please indicate Pew Rally. Our virtual women's study group, grow to glow registration, is now open. This session will be held on each Tuesday starting September 22nd through November 17th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. The registration deadline is September 11th.
This session study book will be Discerning the Voice of God by author and evangelist Priscilla Shire. Please check our Facebook page for online registration details. Or for more information, please email us at growtoglowwomen at gmail.com. School-aged children enrolled in school from March to May 2020 who received free or reduced lunch are eligible for aid from the Georgia CARES Act. For more information, please visit dfcs.georgia.gov website or contact Sister Sharonda Porter. Visit my2020census.gov to complete the census, or you may also complete it via mail, phone, or email. Georgia currently ranks number 37th in the nation for census response. The deadline to complete your census is September 30th. Please remember to be counted. Please check your voters' registration and polling precinct for accuracy. You may call the election office at 706-653-4392 or visit nass.org forward slash can I vote. Early voting for the presidential election will be held on October 12th through the 17th, Monday through Friday, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Citizen Service Center, located here in Columbus at 3111 Citizens Way. Join us for each Sunday worship experience via live stream. You can access our live stream on our website at 4street.org or on social media, including Facebook and YouTube, happening at 7.45 a.m. and again at 10.45 a.m. each Sunday. You may also tune in via radio broadcast at Foxy 105 FM at 8 a.m. each Sunday or on WRBL TV Channel 3 at 8.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast of our services. Join us for weekly Bible study, including deep sea fishing, happening each Sunday at 5 p.m., spiritual brunch Bible study on Mondays at 11 a.m., and engaging and asking held each Wednesday at 6 p.m. with the exception of the fourth Wednesday. Weekly Bible study is held via Zoom video and phone conference, or you may also tune in via Facebook Live. Spiritual Transformation Church School classes are held each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. via Zoom. Join us for one of the following church school classes, including Christian Family, Training for Service and Discipleship, Intermediate Class, Men and Women's Class, Women's Class, Men's Class, Young Adult Class, or Primary Class. For more information, please contact one of the church school class instructors listed here. The Youth Ministry presents virtual children's class held each Monday starting at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. For more information, please contact Sister Sharonda Porter. Please stay connected with us during this time of physical distancing. You may do so by visiting our website at 4street.org or our mobile app. Also remember to check us out on our social media pages including Facebook and YouTube. Tithing alternatives are as follows. You may submit your tithe and offering via mail. Please send your check or money order to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901. Or you may use the finance drop box located inside the educational building. Or access Givelify online via our 4th Street mobile app or on our website at 4street.org. At this time, we ask that you please direct your attention to the names of the members provided here on our prayer list. Please keep them and their families in your thoughts and in your prayers. Sympathy is extended to the following families. Brother Melvin Stallings and family for the passing of his wife, Sister Kimberly Stallings. And Brother Andrew McBride and family for the passing of his wife, Dr. Betty Jean B.J. Thomas McBride. Please keep these families in your thoughts and in your prayers. Upcoming events in August and September include the following. Join us on Wednesday, August 26 at 6 p.m. for our Partners in Christ Caring Ministry Testimony and Prayer Line. On Sunday, August 30th at 10.45 a.m. Worship Experience for Solidarity and End Gathering Day. On Saturday, September 5th at 9.30 a.m. will be the Pastor's Cabinet Meeting. On Sunday, September 6th, during both of our worship experiences will be Communion Worship. And on Monday, September 7th, starting at 6 p.m. will be the Marriage Ministry Meeting. 
If you're interested in accepting the invitation to discipleship, please contact the church office following services today. You may call 706-324-2055 or email us at fsadmin at bellsouth.net. At this time, we'd like to welcome and acknowledge all of our guests who are joining us via live streaming audiences or on broadcast. We hope that you'll be led to join us again. God bless you. Church office hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you have information for the weekly announcements, please submit them via email by Wednesdays at 4 p.m. You may email them to the church office at fsadmin at bellsouth.net. Thank you for your attention and make it a great week. Ooh, look at everybody giving their tides. Mm. Well, I didn't bring any cash. I didn't bring my checkbook. Girl, I didn't even bring a pen, so I guess they have to catch me next Sunday. No, you can still give. Huh? Yeah. How? Through Givelify. Givela what? Givelify. Givela who? Givelify. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Do you have a phone with you? Go to your app store and download Givela, Givelify. How do you spell that? G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Look at your church. Fourth Street. Find the amount you want to give. Okay. Tap. Give. Done. That's it? That's it. Just that easy. Just that easy. Girl, I just gave a five. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you just did that. <laughs> I'm Priscilla Shire, and I wanted to invite you to join me for a seven session Bible study on discerning the voice of God. Do you know that we have the privilege to hear the voice of God? Not to just wait till we get to heaven to actually have connection and relationship with Him, but to experience Him right now. We're gonna talk about how to open up our spiritual ears, how to heighten our spiritual senses so that we can detect the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Time spent in God's Word is still the only way to renew your mind. Throughout the course of this Bible study, can I tell you, that is the whisper of the Holy Spirit. If you hear nothing else over the course of these six or seven weeks that we're going to be spending together, would you hear God say to you, come to me. It's our privilege. It's our right. As children adopted into the family of God, why wouldn't we want to take full advantage of that? John chapter 10, he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So I hope you'll join me and we'll come out on the other side knowing more clearly how to discern the voice of our God. Good morning, Fort Street. Good morning, radio listening audience. I want to welcome you to our virtual morning worship 1045 we want to thank you for your presence and your connection there we go and we want to thank you for your presence and your connection for those who are in facebook live we thank you also we have some real exciting things that's coming our way. Uh, we have, as you've already heard, announced uh, the women's ministry. They've been planning another session of Grow to Glow. We're asking women, not only within our church, but also within our community, to go and sign up uh, through our website. Uh, it's a wonderful book that's being used. I've 
had the opportunity to read it. Um, and uh, it's Discerning God's Voice by Priscilla Shire. And so we're asking that our women come and engage in that fellowship through study. So we want to thank our core team for putting this together and bringing this to our congregation of women. Uh, let me just also encourage you to um, engage in our singles ministry. Uh, our singles ministry will be putting together a Zoom for the gathering of those who are single within our congregation. And so we ask that you would listen out for that information. If you would go on our Facebook, uh, go on our website, and there will be information that will give you that, that uh, information. So please, please, um, those who are single, uh, listen out for that information. I want to thank our men for our Real Talk with Men at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Thank you for connecting. Uh, we had some wonderful engaging conversations. And so we are grateful every fourth Saturday at 8 a.m. We have a forum or a place where men can come and enter into conversations on hot topics that really deal with us as men. And so we ask for those in our congregation as well as in our community to plan to be with us on our next fourth Saturday for Real Talk for Men, uh, 8 a.m. Um, we want to also ask that parents, if you would listen out for information uh, for our youth ministry, uh, we've been doing youth ministry throughout this time of the pandemic, uh, but there are some wonderful and exciting things that are coming uh, in the upcoming months uh, that our youth ministry is planning. Our, um, well, we're asking that you will be participants of, uh, the youth will be participants of, children will be participants of, and uh, we want to continue to encourage them as they've gone back to school and as they're, or in terms of virtual learning, um, but we want them to know that they still have a place that doing ministry for youth, uh, for teenagers. So we ask that you would please, please, parents, um, listen up and listen out for uh, the information either through our Zoom or website or our um, Facebook. So. And we pray that, pray that you will connect the youth and the youth will connect with us. Um, we also want to encourage you to do your census. If you've done your census, thank God for doing your census. If you have not, we encourage you to do your census. If you've registered to vote, we thank God for your registration. Uh, but if you have not, please, please register to vote. Uh, we have to be ready for the month of October for early voting. Um, and we will be getting some things out to you or call the talk or call the action. Uh, we'll be putting a Zoom meeting together. Sir Michael Jones is the president of a call the talk or call the action. Uh, so we're asking different organizations and uh, community organizations, civic organizations to come to the table and that we'll be strategizing on how we want to ex inspire uh, voters to do early voting uh, as well as with November the 3rd, if we have long lines, we want to have some strategies to inspire persons uh, to stay in line if they choose to go to the poll and wear their masks. Um, but we want to encourage uh, as many people as we can to vote, whether you want to do it by absentee ballot, there will be drop boxes uh, that you can drop it off if you have any concerns regarding our postal service system. Uh, but we want to encourage you to vote. Let your voice be heard. Um, God bless you. Uh, our Pickham Partner in Christ Caring Ministry on this Wednesday will be having Pickham's Power of Prayer, uh, testimony, and telling your stories. Uh, so please zoom in with us, call in, or you know Facebook Live with us on Wednesday at 6 o'clock 
This is our time that we come together as communities to pray and so and to hear testimonies and those who will be able to share um, pray stories or stories that they've experienced while we're going through this pandemic. So please, please, um, we look forward to uh, you connecting on Wednesday if the Lord allows us to see it. And this evening we will have our uh, deep sea fishing. We thank God for those who are connecting with deep sea fishing uh, and those who are coming to spiritual brunch on Mondays at, at 11. So God bless you, God keep you as our prayer. I want to thank C.J. Walker and also Cameron G. Uh, and uh, we thank them for their due diligence uh, on our 1045 worship experience. Um, and we are very grateful for these uh, college students and high school students to be so dedicated uh, to making sure that uh, our virtual worship, uh, streaming, uh, Facebook Live uh, is going um, going forward. I want to thank Brother Frazier for his continued due diligence with sound. So we thank God for all of you. Brother Perter was here this morning. We thank God for Reverend Allison and Deacon Moore and all of the deacons who make it possible. Tandra Holyfield and Antoine and uh, Johnson and Phil Allison. Uh, and I know we had Chris Coleman at our 745. So these are the persons who make it possible for us to continue to go live and to have a wonderful worship experience within the sanctuary while we are going live to those who have screened in from various places. So thank you so very much. We have Sister Sharon Lumpkin that's gonna come and share with us at the appropriate time. So we thank God for her. But let us go to God in prayer. We thank God for this opportunity to worship. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for this day again at this hour of 1045 to come and to express openly, to express corporately our faith and our trust in you. We come giving you praise. We come giving you glory because you are an awesome, you are a wonderful God and we thank you. We thank you for those who are streaming live we thank you for our guests and our members. We thank you for our youth. We thank you for our young adult middle ages and golden ages. We just come saying thank you for another opportunity to praise your holy name. Some in their living rooms, some in their bedrooms, some in their kitchens, some riding in their cars, and some that are in hospitals and maybe nursing homes, some that are in watch parties. We just give you glory for those who have a thirst and a desire to worship. We thank you for your provision and your protection. We just come saying thank you. Thank you for the comfort and the peace that you provided for those who've had loved ones to be called home. We thank you for their trust. We thank you for their dependence upon you. In the moments of grieving and bereaving, the transitioning of their loved ones. We thank you for the comforting of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we ask your blessings upon all who are connected under the sound of my weak voice. We pray your blessings upon the sick and the shut-in, those in nursing homes and ICUs, and those who are sick and at home. We pray your blessings upon them. Pray your blessings, O oh Heavenly Father, on this church and churches all across this country. That you will guide and lead the pastors, the under shepherds of those churches. We pray for our city, our state, our nation, our world. And we will not be frantic. We will not be 
anxious. We will not worry about what tomorrow may bring because we know who hold tomorrow in his hands. We pray your blessings upon us all. Keep us in the palm of your hands is our prayer. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus we pray. Let every heart and mind say amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to ask Sister Lumps and she will come and bless us through song.
let go Walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he, he keeps on keeping me. Even through cancer, he's keeping me. Financial stressors and stresses and strain, he, he keeps on keeping us. And it's good advice that you don't let go. So we're thankful that Sister Sharon Lumpkin reminded us through song who's keeping us through all of the trials and the tribulations and I won't <laughs> let go sometimes I feel like it Holy Spirit says don't let go times get dark he said don't 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 let go he, he, he's he's there so I just want to encourage those in the streaming audience sometimes we can't see when we're in the storm but he's keeping you he's promised never leave you nor forsake you thank you sister Lumpkin thank you sister Tandra thank you brother Phil thank you brother Antoine for reminding us of the power of God's keeping to God be the glory I want to ask this morning in light of all that we are facing to be reminded of what Jesus himself says we have been given by him. And so I want to come to just remind us through his word. In John chapter 15, as he is making his way to the cross, he takes time to instruct and to teach his disciples then. And his teaching still have relevance to we who declare that he is the Lord and Savior of our lives. And we are his disciples have relevance today. And as he's teaching about the husbandman, he's teaching about the vine, he's teaching about the branches. We want to focus our attention on verse number 11 in John 15, where Jesus is stated as recorded by John, saying these words. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. And I want to use as a sermon title, I want to tag this text, Jesus Promised Disciples Joy. Jesus Promised Disciples joy. My brothers and sisters in the streaming congregation, those who are gathered here as the remnant, I just want to remind us this morning that Satan has vested interest in keeping disciples of Jesus the Christ from embracing what scripture teaches about Jesus' promise of joy to believers in him. Satan does it by convincing us that we can achieve a joy 
that stripped of all joyous emotion and warmth. He blinds us to the truth about the God honoring joy Jesus the Christ intends for us. In Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 in the New International Version, Isaiah record the prophet Isaiah Reminded them then, and we can be reminded now when he said of a human king who appears to also represent the devil, Satan. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, was actually there when this event happened. You may ask the question, how do we know? How do you know? Because Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter number 10, verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know what? The devil has been joyless ever since he rebelled against the God of joy and was convicted from heaven or evicted from heaven, the home of joy. Satan forfeited his own joy and he bitterly hates us, us who have declared Jesus the Christ as our Lord and Savior. The objects of God's love. His life from the beginning was that God doesn't care about your good. The truth is God wants you to seek real joy in him through Jesus the Christ produced only by the Holy Spirit. Come close. The devil tempts us toward what will dishonor God by telling persuasive lies to convince us that the things of the world that make us miserable will actually make us happy. After thousands of years of doing this, he's remarkably good at it. Jesus said of Satan in the gospel according to John verse, chapter 8 verse 44, uh, when he lies, he speaks his native tongue. He speaks his native language for he is a liar, the father of lies. I just remind us today, Satan hates God. He hates us, those who are declared disciples of Christ, believers in Christ, and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. And he hates joy, God's and ours. He's not about joy. He's about sin and misery, which comes from seeking happiness where it can't be found. God is the one who planted our desire for joy. Come close. I just want to ask you these questions. Are joy and happiness the same thing? How are they different? Have you ever thought about it? How does the Bible contrast between joy and happiness? Come close. Here it is. Emphasis number one. What is happiness? Is it believed that most people would agree that happiness is a goal? Doesn't everyone want to be happy? Truth is, the Bible never promises happiness. However, it does promise joy. 
And there is, my brothers and sisters, a difference. You can have joy and be happy, but you can't really be happy without joy. At least lasting joy, happiness. It's easy to be happy when you have freedom from suffering. You're financially secure and all your relationships are good. No pandemic, no racism, health is good, have a job. But then if you have trouble with one or more of these, what happens to the happiness? It's not probably gone. It's gone. But if you've trusted in Jesus and know you are secure in his hands, you'll still have his joy. Come close. The world kind of happiness is based upon happenings. Meaning, if things happen to go well, you're happy. But if it happens that something bad occurs, then your, your happiness is gone. And that is why you hear so many people say they are so unhappy. Even those who say they are believers in Jesus the Christ. But joy, don't miss this, is not based on happenings. Come close, here it is. What is joy then? What is joy? Emphasis number two. Happiness, as I've stated, is dependent upon circumstances. Joy is not. Let me just continue to be clear. Here's why. Before Jesus went to Calvary, he said, here it is. Here's our text. These things I have spoken to you. Speaking about those disciples then, but also have relevance to disciples who declare Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Now that my joy, there is a personal pronoun there which suggests that implies that implicitly says that joy belongs to Jesus. He says that my joy may be in you. That your joy may be Full, another translation says, may be complete. Jesus said to his disciples then, and it applies to his disciples today in John chapter 16, 22, you will have sorrow. He didn't say you may have sorrow. He didn't say you might have sorrow. He says you will have sorrow now. But I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. Amen. We understand what Jesus was speaking about in the context then because he was hanging on a cross. He was about to go and hang on a cross. And the disciples was going to be standing afar off and they were going to be seeing Jesus on that Friday dying. But he says, I'm going to see you again. And your sorrow will be turned to joy. Your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. Stop believing the lie of Satan. Stop believing erroneous teaching of people who keep talking about the devil still in their joy. The Bible says... No one can take your joy from you. Joy, chara, a Greek noun that describes an inner gladness, an inner delight or rejoicing. This joy 
that Jesus is teaching, teaching about is not an experience that comes from favorable circumstances, but is a gift from God through Jesus the Christ produced only by the Holy Spirit. You know, I know there are some terms that use happiness in Old and New Testament. Happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I understand that in the Beatitudes it says blessed, happy. But that's not the kind of happiness that Jesus is referring to. He's talking about a deeper internal connection with God through Jesus Christ. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. The joy that only he can give. Only produced by the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises the disciples that their joy will be full or complete. So you don't have to, if you truly believe you have what Jesus said you have, keep praying for joy. <laughs> he, he says, I've given you my joy. And I've given it completely. But sometimes what happens, we base, we confuse happiness and joy, worldly happiness with this joy that Jesus says we have as disciples. Because we tend to see our circumstances as the producer, the production or the producing of happiness. We think the absence of trials and tribulations produces happiness. And what Jesus is saying, in the midst of the trials and the tribulation, you still have joy. That's why a mother can stand at the castle of a son. And that son has given his life to Christ. That mother can still say, I'm crying tears of joy. A wife that can stand at the casket of a husband, knowing that that husband is saved, can say that I cry in tears of joy because uh, I knew what it was like when he was on his sick bed and couldn't even recognize me and could not even pick up a fork and, and could not bathe himself. And, 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 and I, I have joy that God has called him. Doesn't mean that she wouldn't cry. Doesn't mean that she wouldn't hurt. But, but joy says that it's, it, it, he's all right. Jesus promised the disciples their joy will be full or, or complete. Don't, don't miss this. Jesus went to the cross and raised from the grave to make sure that joy would be complete for those who have a love trust obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ and dwelt by the Holy Spirit Jesus assures them that no one's going to take their joy or our joy away that is a permanent possession not a fleeting moment like happiness is Jesus says to them and he says to us today you might you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. It still applies to us today. Worldly, my brothers and sisters, happiness is not much help when sickness comes, when death comes, when unemployment comes, when marital problems come. When school problems come, when money stop coming, but bills keep on running, but joy is. Let me just say that again. Joy is. So come close. Here it is. Emphasis number three. The differences. What is happiness? What is joy? Hopefully I've established the fact that happiness and joy is not the same thing at all. You can be in a state of happiness one moment and then dread the next. 
if something happens to go wrong, you lose nothing in heaven. You get bad news, but your good news is better. You are happy one moment, then sad the next, but you can be joyful in that same moment. Even though joy and happiness have a lot in common. One thing that they don't have in common is one is permanent while the other is fleeting. One come from God through Jesus the Christ produced by the Holy Spirit and one is from you. One can come and go but the other will remain. If joy and happiness my brothers and sisters were friends happiness would be the unfaithful one of the two. Let me just go ahead and just rewind and just press forward one more time. If joy and happiness were friends, happiness would be the unfaithful one of the two. There is a difference. Come close, here it is. Emphasis number four. The permanence of joy the permanence of joy. We have joy, we being those who have a love, trust, obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we have joy because we've been saved. We've been rescued from the penalty of sin. We've been rescued from the dominion of sin. And one of these old days, we're going to be rescued from the presence of sin. How amazing that we've been rescued from the wrath of God who placed it on his only begotten son, Jesus. Paul rejoiced in this, and you should too, we should too, writing May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That's why when you have the joy that Jesus has promised and the Holy Spirit has produced that joy inside of you, it resonates while you're standing in the midst of the pandemic, while you're standing in the midst of the unemployment, while you're standing in the midst of all kinds of crises that's all around you, you can say, my hope is built, come on somebody, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy, holy, with joy, lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. In the midst of the ship going down on Christ. In the midst of all things falling apart on Christ. The solid rock I stand. While all other ground is sinking sand. The fruit of the spirit my brothers and sisters is love. The characteristic of love is joy. Joy flows out of the agape love of God. This joy doesn't depart. Even when we shed tears, Paul shows that the two can coexist. Writing, as I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 4, he longed to see his spiritual son Timothy. Apparently Paul ached to see Timothy again and wept over him with longing but still had joy in the midst of even his tears. That's why Paul and Silas could sing the hymn while they were in the innermost parts of the jail at midnight. Is there any? I don't know what they sung, but while they were in the innermost parts of the jail at midnight, they struck up a hymn. I don't know if it was Father, I stretched my hand to thee, no mother help I know. I don't know if it's precious Lord, take my hand. I don't know what it was with joy. They were singing in the midst of the jail, in the innermost parts of the jail, in, in stockades, chained with the guard on the outside. Even when we encounter trials, this is what James says, 
count it <laughs> all joy. Let me just say it again. When we encounter all trials, all trials, all tribulations, all valleys, James tells us, count it all joy, my brothers. When you meet trials of various kinds, it's in James 1 verse 2. When we meet trials and tribulations, my question to you, are you still having joy? It's not devoid of emotions. It's not devoid of gladness. It's not devoid of all kinds of, of feelings. But what I'm saying, feelings don't control the joy. Faith does. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith that I know that Jesus Christ has given me everything I need, even in the midst of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I know he is with me. I have joy in him do you remember Jesus saying in our text today these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full full is a way of seeing it as complete and that same completeness of joy is found in many places in the bible like in jesus words paul's epistles james letter peter and the apostle john too we can verify by looking in the word to really validate what jesus said that his promise is absolutely real his promise is absolutely true we have his joy even when sadness flood our souls, the Holy Spirit reminds us that even in the midst of going through whatever we're going through, tears may endure for a night. <laughs> tears may endure for a night. But joy joy will come in the morning and I just come by with some good news to somebody today to tell you Jesus the Christ brings joy because we've been saved to eternal life and even though this body goes back to the dust I can have joy, unspeakable joy, when I truly have come to believe that I have a home not made by hands, eternal into heaven. But he says also, peace, come on somebody, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid do not let your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me and Jesus says I've given you my joy and I just come by to tell you in the streaming audience whatever your circumstances may be whatever your crisis may be whatever your situation may be if you truly have a relationship with God through Jesus the Christ the object of your faith is in his word the object of your faith should be in his promise the object of your faith should be in the promise and the presence of God through Jesus Christ and dwelt by the power of the Holy Spirit and you come to be persuaded I have exactly what Jesus says I have as his child as his disciple as a follower of Christ and I just come by to encourage somebody as we're walking through this pandemic as we're walking through systemic racism as you're walking through the challenges of life as a believer in Jesus Christ you have to walk knowing that you have this joy
joy and that's why you ought to be able to just every now and then while you're sitting in that quiet moment while the flood is flooding your soul you can say come on somebody father I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me I gotta go y'all oh oh whether shall I go but you ought to be able to also raise the song this world this world of this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world so can't take it away I don't know about anyone in the streaming audience I don't know about the remnant sitting here but every now and then when I'm thinking about my daddy I will come down and I'll think about how good he was to me but I also think about how good my heavenly father has been to me I may get sad every now and then but I always remember what the Holy Spirit reminds me of even though daddy is not here I can't talk to him anymore I can't walk with him anymore but I still have joy and I can say this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away cancer can't take it away is there anybody in the house coronavirus can't take it away lupus can't take it away is there anybody in the house muscarosis can't take it away nothing can take it away unimportant unemployment show can't take it away husband and wife who's in a bitter squabble and having all kinds of difficulty show can't take it away children not doing what we've told them to do show can't take it away this joy I have I tell the young adults if you're going through trials and tribulations in campus colleges maybe things are not going the way you think think they should go you need to evaluate if your happiness is really causing you to be unhappy or whether you truly have the joy of Jesus because joy is not based on happiness and you can keep on walking on your college campuses just a humming this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away even though you applied for jobs and seem like nothing is coming your way you can still say this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away I had certain plans that I had planned now for my life they're not going the way I really want them to go I thought I'll be here in five years I thought I'll be here in two years and it just seems as if nothing is happening the way I planned it but I just come by to tell you when you truly have turned it over in the hands of God and you trust his word trust what Jesus said this joy this joy I have even though things are not going my way the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away but let me just go ahead and tell you right now as I hasten to my seat if you do not have a love obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ you'll be miserable you'll be the most unhappiest person in the world because your happiness is based on your happenings but I just come by to tell you if you truly want this kind of joy you must believe in the one who came down through 40 and 2 generations Generations conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit. If you truly want this kind of happiness, you must believe in the one who walked the dusty streets of Palestine, giving sight to the blind, making lame men women walk. Is there anybody in the house healing that woman with the 12 years issue of blood? If you truly 
want this kind of joy, you must believe in the one who went to a hill called Calvary, laid his hands down, allow them to put nails in his hands, allow them to put nails in his feet. I just want to let you see the epitome of joy. Joy said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, boys and girls unto me. They lifted joy high, stretched joy wide. The Bible says, Joyce prayed a prayer and said, Father, forgive them in the midst of his dying, in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of his taking on the wrath of God, the punishment of God, the penalty of God, the condemnation of God, just for you and just for me. He prayed a prayer, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The Bible says he died between the sixth to the ninth hour. The, the, the earth began to reel and rock. The sun refused to shine. And there was a centurion soldier at the foot of the cross said, surely, surely this must be the son of God. The Bible says he said it's finished. Tattlest I, I paid in full the penalty of sin, broken the dominion of sin. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. The Bible says if you truly want this kind of joy, you must believe. They came to him, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came to Pilate, requested his dead body, put it in a bar, a new tomb, and then there he is. I love Friday. Is there anybody in the house? But I don't stay stuck on Friday because Friday, the story didn't stop there. I love Saturday. Is there anybody in the house? Because they put him in a tomb on that Saturday. He stayed there. Friday stayed there. Saturday, Saturday night. But I love Sunday. Is there anybody in the house? Because early joy was raised from the dead with all power in his hands. Resurrection power, saving power, restoration power, all power in his hands. The Bible says that Jesus walked around for 40 days showing that God's promise is absolutely real, absolutely true. His power is absolutely real. You can bank on it. The Bible says, caught a heaven, caught a cloud, ascended back to heaven, and now he sits on the right hand throne of God. In one of these old days, is there anybody in the streaming audience who truly believe? Is it anybody in this place who truly believe? He's coming back again. I don't know when, and I sure don't know where. I don't know what time, but I believe the same way he was born in Bethlehem of Judea, walked the dusty streets of Palestine, died on the cross, resurrected on that third day, Sunday morning, sitting on the right hand throne of Father. One of these old days, he's coming back again. Is there anybody here who knows what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, you ought to say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. He's worthy. Yes, he is. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's promised to give his disciples his joy which no one can ever take it away and I just want to say to you this morning no matter what you're going through I don't know what it is and if you truly have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ then you have his joy you have his peace 
you have hope. But if you do not have a relationship, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you do not have his promise of eternal life. You do not have his joy. You do not have his peace. But the good news is he's made a way. <laughs> he's made a way for those who've been given to Christ. Those who will hear the good news and he will convict their minds and convert their hearts and he will compel you to respond to Jesus Christ, to believe in Jesus the Christ, that you too can be rescued from the penalty and the power of sin and one day from the presence of sin. And we extend the invitation to you right now. We extend it to you that you too can be saved and you can receive his joy. He says, if you confess with your mouth, in Romans 10, 9, sincerely believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And we invite you right now to come. If you can call this number, 706-324-2055, and you earnestly and sincerely believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you repent. Identifying that you are a sinner that need a Savior and Lord in your life and respond to the person of Jesus the Christ in faith, believing in Him. Maybe you're looking for a church home. You relocated here because of military reassignment, maybe because of a job relocation. Maybe you're matriculating through one of the universities, the community colleges, one of the technical schools here in this surrounding area in Muskogee County, Columbus, Georgia, Midland, Georgia, Harris County, Fort Benning, Casita. Maybe in Russell County, Phoenix City, Fort Mitchell, surrounding area, we invite you to come and unite here at the Fort Street Missionary Baptist Church. Well, you can walk in the will and the way of the Word of God. You can grow and you can mature in the will and the way of the Word of God. We invite you to call the same number, 706-324-2055. Let them know that you're relocated. Let them know that you desire to become a part of the Fortune Missionary Baptist Church. Will you come? Right now. Maybe you need to be restored back into fellowship. You've been out of fellowship for over so many years. And you want to reunite with Fort Street Missionary Baptist Church. You want to be restored. You call that same number, 706-324-2055, and let them know that I want to be restored back in fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. I want to become united with the Fort Street Missionary Baptist Church. Call that number, 706-324-2055. Arms are wide open to receive blacks, to receive whites, to receive Asians, Latino, Mexicans, to receive liars, to receive cheaters, to receive those who are in a lifestyle of homosexuality, to receive those who are living apart out of the will of God through Jesus Christ. But one thing I will say to you, whatever you're involved in and entangled in, he can deliver you from it. Whatever lifestyle, he can save your soul. Make it whole if you would come. We welcome you. We will continue, continue to preach the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That you may experience his joy. Experience it completely. Experience it full. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God bless you, God keep you, it's my prayer. Jesus promised his disciples joy. We have come to the time in our worship experience for you to bring the offering with joy. That you can be a hilarious giver. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a hilarious giver.
He loves a generous giver. And he's made it possible for you to demonstrate his generosity his, through bringing of the tithe, the offerings. And so we want you to take a moment, those who are using Givelify or who desire to use Givelify, we ask that you would go to our site Look for the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Our brand, our emblem, our symbol is the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb. Look for that. And you can go ahead and bring the tithe through Givelify. You can give your offerings, your benevolence, your mission bound, your love offering of free will. We ask also, we would be celebrating in fellowshipping with St. James AME Church and Pastor Baker. This is our Pew Rally Sunday. But because of this pandemic, we have not been able to do that. And so, but we've made it possible for you to make that special contribution where we use this time to provide benevolence to the least and the less. Those who may not be able to pay their mortgage, those that may not be able to pay their bills, utilities, and so we ask that you would be kind in this special giving that we can continue to show the provision of God. When people come, they're sent to us. The Bible says you just don't want to pray for them. But faith without works is dead. And we want them to know that we walk by faith. And, and, and the brokenhearted it's near to God's heart. It's close to God's heart. And we want to make sure that we are sensitive and we are benevolent towards those who are in need. So please help us by being able to make that special contribution. If you choose not to use the Givelify, we ask that you would use the envelope that we provide. And just go ahead and fill it out now identifying your tithe, your mission bound, your special offerings and drop them off at drop it off at the drop box in the educational building between Monday through Friday between 10 and 4 p.m. We ask that you would wear your mask when you come. Practice five and six feet distancing. But we want you to go ahead and prepare that envelope for the drop off this week. If you choose not to drop it off, if you choose not to go through Givelify and you want to mail it in, we appreciate your mail in. We ask that you would use the envelope that the church provides. Go ahead and address a mailing envelope so that you can go ahead and address it to the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. P.O. Box 1591-1591, Columbus, Georgia. 31901 is the zip code. And just go ahead and mail it in. And we thank you. Whether you do it through Give the Five, whether you drop it off, or whether you mail it in, we thank you and we pray God's blessings be upon you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. We have a fifth Sunday in this month. So remember next Sunday, we have Solidarity Sunday. So we will ask that you will connect through Zoom, call in to our church school, then prepare to connect with us through virtual worship at 1045 pray for us as we pray for you as we walk through this week together God bless you God keep you as my prayer dear gracious father we thank you for this offering that has been given we thank you for the givers bless them is our prayer now Lord we ask that you would dismiss us from this place but never never from your grace never from your presence Never from your power, your power, your protection, nor your provision. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus. We lift this up to you from whom all blessings flow. Let us all sing.
Holy Spirit, power to all. May God's blessings be upon you. Walk in his joy. You may be dismissed. Thank you so very much for tuning in with us and listening to the message. We pray that it was a message to inspire. We pray that it was a message to encourage. We also pray that it was a message to convict. If you do not have a church home, we pray that you will come and join us here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church where we're located at the corner of 3rd Avenue and 5th Street in the historic district. And if you do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we want you to know that he desires that you be saved right now. Again, thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you on next week.